Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Seeker Plus. Today I am Trace, and this is episode one of three in our new series on noise. Make sure you subscribe so you get all the episodes in this series, and come find the audio version of this podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes and wherever you get your casts. And if you're new to Seeker Plus, this is a show where we take a big topic and we break it down into chunks so we all understand it a bit better. And today, we're gonna talk about noise and how it became a thing in the first place and why we categorize some things as noise, but why all sound isn't considered noise. So what exactly is noise? How is it different from sound and what sound even is? It's gonna be one of those big, big topics. So we're digging into the engineering and physics of noise this week. Stick around to the end for a special announcement, but first, let's kick into it. Noise is a big deal. It can be damaging, it can be drowning, it can be distracting. Noise can be visual, auditory, electronic, it can be signal scrambling, you can have musical noise. You can just use the word noise to describe something you don't like, it's just noise. But what is noise? Like, what's the difference between noise and, well, not noise? So first, where did this idea of noise come from? Should we maybe look at the word noise? You know, etymology time, baby! Noise comes from the Latin nausea, actually means sickness, but it comes from the root word meaning ship, which is really cool, uh, because, you know, people get seasick, which is really interesting. It also could come from the Old French, meaning a quarrel, which is interesting, funnily like a noisome noi or annoy. interesting, also relates back to sound, although it's mostly used for smells, really, so like a noisome beast, which is a great word, by the way, you should take that one with you, you're welcome. Then let's look up sound, though, in etymology. Sound actually means noise, which is wrong, right? It seems messed up. You can't just say, like, what's noise? Well, noise is this. Well, what's sound? Sound is noise. It's from Middle English, Anglo-French, comes from the Latin of sonus, which means it's literally sound, and that's messed up. Etymology has definitely failed us this time, lasses and lads. So let's go instead to the dictionary. Noise is, quote, a sound, especially one that is loud or unpleasant that causes disturbance. Of course, right off the bat, there's a problem with that because who decides what is loud or unpleasant? Who decides what's disturbing? That's a lot of judging from Mr. Shinari. Dictionary. That was bad. Anyway, let's work backwards. We've got sound. A sound is a vibration, a pressure wave that travels through the air or another medium, and it can be heard by a person or an animal's ear. Boom. No judging. Mr. Dictionary, step back. This is something that I can work with, right? It's a pressure wave. So what is human noise then? And that's a simple answer. It's a sound that we don't like. And you might think, music. I don't like that kind of music, so that's noise. Jackhammers, I think we can all agree, probably noise. Screaming children. Some people might like it, but to a lot of people, it's noise. And all of those things are correctly assuming noise. But noise is also, for some people, wind in the trees, or rainfall, or birds and bees. If your goal is to listen for a predator, those things could be considered noise, right? You can't listen for the predator because the damn rainforest is too loud. Noise could be a very pleasant violin playing softly at 2 a.m. when you're trying to sleep, neighbor. The most soothing voice in the world trying to talk to you in the middle of a metal concert. That would be noise. This is all subjective, and I kind of love that because, you know, we do a science podcasts. We don't really get to do a lot of subjective stuff. But in this case, this is all subjective but we're gonna table it for the rest of the episode. Instead, we're gonna talk about concrete, objective stuff. Sound is, again, pressure waves traveling through a medium. So let's unpack that a bit. Think of yourself as a tiny molecule in a line, right? There's a molecule over here, there's a molecule over there. You're just hanging out. And then all of a sudden, the guy next to you bumps into you and you're like, what? And then you accidentally bump into the person on your left, right? And then, oh, gosh, again, you get hit from the right and you go back to the left. And again, faster this time and then lightly at first, but then in increasing intensity. And then you're just vibrating back and forth and you're all just bumping into everybody. And then all of a sudden it subsides and then it comes back and then you're bumping and then it subsides again. And then, oh, that's sound. It's molecules hitting each other and passing the energy from one little bit to the next little bit 
in that medium, uh, like the molecular version of the wave in a baseball stadium. But instead of the wave going around every couple of minutes, it's multiple waves per second. It's a lot. Pressure waves. It's f***ed up. Sound needs a medium to travel. Air molecules are a good medium. Water is a great medium. Robert Boyle in the 1600s discovered this by putting a bell under glass. He rang the bell and then he used a pump to vacuum the air out from the inside under the glass. And the ringing stopped. The bell was still vibrating, but the vibration couldn't pass the energy into the air to get it to the glass to get it outside of the glass. There was no medium for the sound to move through. Sidebar for nerds, when I was reading about this, I was all like, wait, but where does the energy go? Because it's still energy, right? And it's just contained inside of the bell, and it causes just a little bit of heat. There's a little bit of heat, and then it dissipates. Isn't that cool? Man, and sidebar for nerds. So what exactly is noise? In engineering, it can mean a lot of different things. If you're talking about sound, of course, we've sort of kicked that horse to death, but it could also be data or static mixed in with a signal that contains your data. Think of like static on the radio when you're driving, or if you remember the old rabbit ears on the TV, all of the little snow that you would get when you would try and adjust the antenna on your television. Um, I mean, over-the-air television still exists, so I guess you could also think of that with those new HD antennas that are more solid plastic. Uh, any of that digital static, it's similar, but it's noise in the signal. Okay, there's another bit of noise that you might experience often. So think about the headphones that you might be wearing while you listen to this episode. If you're not, you know, just sit around for a second, we'll come back to you. But for those wearing headphones, I promise I am not gonna talk. Turn the volume all the way up, just for a second, and then turn it back down. You have five seconds. Go. Okay, did you turn it back down? Okay, turn it back down. Right. Did you hear a hissing sound? That was noise in the line, noise in the system between whatever you're listening on and your headphones. It's annoying for some people, if you really hear it all the time, the hissing sound is always there in speakers and in headphones. The wires in your electronics and devices, the power going into your house, even Wi-Fi signals all have this noise. And you just heard a representation of it. What it really is is the electrons moving through the wires, but we'll come back to that. This noise stuff really becomes important in radio telescopes and in cameras, in scientific sensing equipment. So it's important for a lot of people to understand the difference between noise and signal. Even though we interpret it as sound and noise, engineers call it signal and noise. So they use something called the signal to noise ratio, which is the quality of a stream of data. And it's measured in decibels. So if you have a zero decibel signal to noise ratio, then it's equal amounts noise and data, not the best. If you have a 100 decibel signal to noise ratio, that is way more noise. You probably can't hear anything. And if you have negative 100 decibels, that's way more signal, which is really great. The hiss in your headphone, again, electron movement, not a big deal. You probably don't hear it most of the time. Um, it, it is kind of awesome that you're hearing electrons move, I have to say, just another little nerd sidebar there. But it happens because those electrons create chaos in the system, and that chaos has to have somewhere to go, and so it ends up as noise. It also exists in many other mediums. For example, if you think of uh, vinyl records, the popping and hissing, that could be considered the noise, even though it's caused by more dust and physical things usually. But long HDMI cables from a component to your TV, those have noise in the wires because of the electrons moving through them. The electrons are moving through metal. That's a medium. It's very similar to waves moving through the atmosphere with sound. So that's why we use the same terminology. When it comes to noise for science, in a concrete example, radio telescopes are a great way to think about it. When you think of a radio telescope, picture not the one that you look through, but a giant dish, probably out in a desert somewhere or something, out on top of a mountain, and it's pointed up at the sky, and it sucks in all sorts of waves from all across the spectrum. And many of these waves are just a big mess, just this big, noisy mess, They're like, <sighs> kind of thing, right? 
the signal that isn't. We need the little signal that's coming in, that electron that's excited by the solar radiation and creating the aurora that we're trying to measure, right? We just need that. But all of this other stuff is happening that we have to filter out. And this is important because radio telescopes, they need a relatively quiet patch of sky. But even then, the noise is still there. So we have to be able to filter it out. There's all sorts of different things in the universe that are sending out frequencies all the time. And remember, radio telescopes are picking up a huge just swath of those frequencies. We've got black holes sending stuff out, pulsars, nebulas, quasars, radio galaxies. And if I just want to listen to, say, one specific star, I have to filter out all that other stuff. It's like I'm standing in a room filled with billions of people and they're all shouting at the same time, but I just want to hear one of them. So to filter out the others, I have to measure all the different noise that's out there in the universe and know what to filter out. And this is what astronomers have to do all the time, and I am way oversimplifying it. I know it's really, really hard and really, really incredible. But it sounds a lot like what we were talking about at the top, when you're standing in a crowded room and you're listening to the person next to you, doesn't it? I need to filter out all these other people. I can't listen to them. I just want to focus on this one person that I came here to talk to. Which brings us back to subjective noise. So that's it for this episode of Noise. But before you go, next week, we're going to explore this concept as far as we can with Noise Week. Almost every episode of Seeker is going to be doing something related to noise, and I think that you guys are going to love it. We've partnered with my friend Mike Rugnetta of Reasonably Sound Podcast, and he'll be coming in next week to talk more about noise with me for parts two and three, and I hope you're really excited because I am Noise Week. Woo! Is that noisy? A little bit. It was a little noisy. Thank you so much for watching Seeker Plus. For more learnings on noise, watch this video that explores the depths of why headphones have even more noise than we could talk about in this episode. And make sure you come back next week for the next chapter. Follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Seeker or me at Trace Dominguez, and we'll see you next time.